Cyclone Lola intensifying as it curves towards Vanuatu. A storm that's well on its way to intensifying as it approaches the main islands of Vanuatu. It is right now at 12.1 degrees south, 169.2 degrees east. This is Cyclone Lola, a perhaps slightly surprising early season storm that's really cranking it up. At 7am local time in Vanuatu, 8am in Fiji, October 23rd, it had winds of 70 miles per hour and a pressure estimate of 987 millibars, moving nearly due south at 11 miles per hour, that's 17 kilometers per hour. So that's the latest right now, it's borderline hurricane equivalent uh, and it looks like it's going to continue to intensify. Well here's its current position right now displayed on the map with a fairly decent wind field at this early stage extending out up to 80 nautical miles in the northeastern quadrant right now and its current positions from land 47 kilometers from the very small island of Tikopia 249 from Bani or Bani uh, to the northwest 253 from Vanua Lava 429 from Luganville and 631 from the Vanuatu capital Port Villa of course we're expecting cyclonic conditions to occur across many of these islands with especially eastern islands being the po point of concern with very heavy rainfall leading to flooding and landslides as well as strong winds as we expect this storm to strengthen. At the moment we are most concerned about the flash flooding potential and we're expecting up to 18 inches of rain 450 millimeters along the eastern islands of Vanuatu with significant amounts expected across the whole island chain. Heavy rainfall with high rain rates are always likely to cause flash flooding and landslides. Of course we'll also get strong winds, very rough seas and uh, potentially a small storm surge. Here's the track forecast then over the next few days and it, how its wind field progresses and you can see it there peaking probably close to Espiritu Santo and then moving towards the south and then southeastwards past Port Villa during the week and dying off quite quickly actually by the time we get to midweek and late week and then it gets eventually absorbed into a very large extratropical low down near Norfolk Island next weekend. Current wind estimates are quite close together here. The JTWC have pulled the trigger and have called it a Category 1 on the Sapphire Simpson scale, but everyone else at the moment running with 70 miles per hour or thereabouts, and that makes it a Category 2 on the Australian scale, uh, which is used in this region, uh, but a, still a tropical storm just shy of hurricane equivalent status on the international Sapphire Simpson scale. Here's the JTWC's forecast cone, and this is actually the last one, uh, but they're expecting a 100 knot peak there, that's category 3 on the Sapphire Simpson scale, moving through some of those northeastern islands, and then on towards that large island there, and then southwestwards, curving right round towards New Caledonia in the end, as a remnant probably by that point. Here's the GFS forecast, showing that the storm does ramp up really quickly, and then it does take a big hit when it hits Espiritu Santo and then moves southwards and then southeastwards could still impact some of those islands in New Caledonia but eventually it gets swept away into a very large uh, extratropical system down there at those higher latitudes and eventually could reach New Zealand as an extratropical cyclone. Once again watching that there a few areas could get smacked with some pretty strong winds over the next few days um, especially the northeastern islands. So here is the uh, rain, the radar reflectivity simulation, and you can see a clear cut eye there. And then the eastern side is the part that holds on as the western side gets completely destroyed by the looks of things there. Uh, and then eventually a big band to the south as it starts to turn post tropical, getting more and more separated from the storm. But certainly that initial period there looks really good for Lola uh, as it approaches its first and second and possibly further landfalls on those islands and then uh, scoots off towards the south. Of course, early in this season, these storms aren't really going to survive for very long, especially when they get to those higher latitudes. 
Here's the rainfall expectations in its accumulations, and this is why we're pretty concerned. A few of these areas, especially where it is right now, uh, not quite reaching the islands, but you know, a small nudge would bring some of those dark pink areas, bright pink areas, towards the islands, and that would mean an extraordinary amount of rain. At the moment, we're probably expecting maximums of 18 inches, but before the storm strikes land, some of those areas over water could reach 25 inches and that is over 600 millimeters of rainfall and along most of those islands there we could see isolated amounts up to 10 inches even uh, further south and 6 inches in Port Villa that's 150 millimeters well sea surface temperatures certainly aren't a concern uh, at least in the short term for this storm they're very warm uh, pushing above 28 degrees Celsius probably close to 30 actually where the storm is right now and they'll drop gradually to around 29 near the main islands and then further towards 25 degrees near New Caledonia so it will of course uh, wane uh, substantially sooner or later but it will be after it passes Vanuatu Take a look at the satellite imagery and it's certainly uh, impressive looking with the real big banding there. It's got that shrimp appearance is what we often like to say when we see very uh, high moisture uh, rapidly intensifying storms and this one may well be rapidly intensifying as well. No sign of a clear eye just yet but maybe one just starting to appear there. You can watch all of this latest imagery on the Force 13 website force13.com slash satellite. Certainly not bereft of convection, a very powerful at times into the minus 80s, maybe even close to minus 90s earlier today. They've just uh, boiled off a little bit, but I expect we'll see another big pulse or two starting up fairly soon. So I do think it will become a hurricane equivalent fairly soon and continue intensifying, and I expect that it will probably reach borderline category 3 status in the next few days on the Sapper-Simpson scale, and that could be borderline category 4 on the Australian scale.